So as we get to the end of the Clone Wars, one of the final moments of the war is the showdown on Mustafar, where Vader is sent to Mustafar to kill the Separatist leadership. And I figured today we'd take a closer look at the facility that Separatist leadership is hiding in, because it's got more to it than meets the eye. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoy this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So we're all familiar with the showdown on Mustafar. It's one of the final moments of the Clone Wars when the Separatist Council is eliminated and the shutdown order is formally sent to the battle droids. Now, many people, myself included, consider that to be the end of the Clone Wars. And that makes this facility particularly important. So let's talk about what exactly it is. So the formal name of the facility is the Kleger Mining Corp facility on Mustafar. And it's used primarily to mine raw resources from the resources rich planet. It does this in a variety of different ways, including complex electromagnetic systems that pull the resources from the rock itself, as well as manual labor from Mustafarians and their droid companions, which would be used to manually extract the resources both from the lava and from the rocks. The facility itself, built on the side of a mountain, is carefully shielded against the ever-present volcanic eruptions around it, using a system of energy shields that protect the facility from any falling debris or lava that would come from the erupting volcano. By the way, putting a facility inside of a volcano may seem pretty stupid, but it actually does make at least a little bit of sense. That would be one of the most resource-rich spots on the planet, with the volcano being the source of a lot of these resources, so building a facility as close to that as possible does make some sense. In fact, it's the deactivation of these shields that ultimately dooms the facility during the duel between Obi-Wan and Anakin. But this facility is more than just a mine. It obviously serves as much more than that, actually. The mine itself is a cover for a much larger separatist facility built into the side of the mountain. This facility is primarily a droid factory designed for constructing battle droids. It was constructed about midway through the war as separatist forces began finding themselves in increasingly desperate positions and needed more production. So this was sort of a hidden droid production facility designed to back up the the Separatist numbers, especially if major Separatist industrial centers fell to Republic control. But it was designed to serve as more than just a big factory, because as we see, there's actually a major command center built into this facility. This isn't just a center for controlling the mining operations, this is actually designed to be a base of operation for Separatist leadership as a last-ditch location for them to fall back to if every other major Separatist stronghold had fallen. Now, it's worth noting that every stronghold hadn't fallen. There was still a good portion of the Outer Rim in Separatist control, but the desperate situation with the chain of command within the CIS likely led to the use of this facility simply for security's sake. So this facility served as a mine, a command center, and a factory, all designed to prop up the Separatist war effort in a desperate last-ditch sort of last-stand scenario, somewhere for Separatist leadership to flee to if all other options were lost. The facility itself, therefore, had the authority to command droid forces, which is why the shutdown order was able to be sent from this facility to droids all across the galaxy formally ending the Clone Wars. The facility itself would ultimately, however, be destroyed. When the shielding systems are damaged during the duel between Obi-Wan and Anakin, the shields are dropped and the facility soon succumbs to the volcano it's built on, with the shattered remains of it left clinging to the side of a mountain, but a majority of the functional sides of the facility now left in tattered ruins. That being said, though, Separatist leadership still did fall back to this volcano after their defeat at the Battle of Utapau. Actually, technically right before their defeat at the Battle of Utapau, but it kind of goes hand in hand. If you'd like to learn about the Battle of Utapau, where the Republic dealt one final blow to the Separatist command structure that sent them careening into chaos that would ultimately lead to that showdown on Mustafar, I'll leave a link up here to my battle analysis video on the Battle of Utapau, where Republic forces not only conquered Utapau from Separatist control, but managed to kill General Grievous. And I'd like to let me know down in the comments if you think it makes sense for Separatist leadership to be sent to Mustafar. After all, the Separatists still do have a significant foothold in the galaxy, controlling major population centers like Raxus, which was serving as their capital. Do you think it makes sense to send these leaders to the sort of facility on Mustafar, or was it really just to put them somewhere vulnerable for Vader to kill them? And if you have anything else like to see me cover in Star Wars, you can let me know down below in the comments. 
Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.